हेलो जी ऑल माई स्टोरी लवर्स वेलकम बैक इन स्टोरी टाइम चैनल आई एम पल्लवी रीडिंग इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज फॉर यू टूडेज चैप्टर नेम इज एन ओल्ड मैंस एज लेस विजडम दिस एक्सपीरियंस टेकन फ्रॉम द बुक ऑफ वाइज एंड अदरवाइज रिटन बाय द ग्रेट सुधा मूर्ति This experience shared by the great Sudha Murthy in her life. Now let's go. Orissa is a state with beautiful thick forest and the famous Chilka Lake. It is well known for its great temples. The Puri Jagannath Temple and the Sun Temple of Konark are among the most remarkable architectural achievements of ancient india there is also a lot of poverty in orissa and around 13500 ngos work there to help the poorest of the poor many tribal people dwell in remote inaccessible areas deep in the interior of the state's dense forest i firmly believe that wherever our company opens a development center the services of our infosys foundation should also be made available there thus orissa become an area of activity for the foundation once i had to travel khala handi it is near a town nor a city and it is known for anything special it is just another part of another tribal district like mayurbhunj or koraput they said that before independence kalahandi was ruled by a king the tribals believed that the king was there caretaker and possess supreme powers they are so innocent that they even today they don't believe that kings no longer exist if a child is orphan it is left at the doorstep of the collector's house for them the ultimate protector is the raja bhavani pattanam is the district headquarters of kalahandi It is small town quite different from other district headquarters that I know such as Dharwad which is my hometown frankly i was surprised that bhavani pattam was such a sleepy place i had gone there to meet the head of an ngo who had been working tirelessly for the welfare of orphans each grey hair on his head told the story of his selfless dedication in order to serve these children without any distraction he had chosen to remain unmarried while travelling from bhubaneswar to kesina the nearest station i kept observing the tribal people they would wait quietly on the platform for their train to arrive they carried different kinds of fresh produce such as pineapples forest bananas and potatoes the women wore brightly colored sarees leaf green bright yellow dark red and the simply cotton their jet black hair with flowers stuck in i was accompanied by a person who knew the local language and had agreed to be my interpreter knowledge of the local language is the more essential when one wants to work at the grassroots level i had thousand question to ask about these tribal people what civilization mean to them what their lifestyle was and so on tribes normally live in groups i was told they are not too rigid about rituals like we civilized people are 
they are direct in their ways most importantly the concept of individual ownership of the property is rarely found among them i was keen to get to know these people my mission was to provide assistance to them by some means without threatening their identity my interpreter told me that to meet these tribals i would have to walk 2 miles since no car could reach their hamlet after a long walk we finally reach a village i met a woman whose age i could not guess immediately my interpreter was finding it difficult to translate the lady's words because her dialect was quite different she was dark skin and dark hair woman she must have been around 70 years old but there was no gray in her hair she obviously could not afford to dye her hair she obviously could not afford to dye her hair so what was her secret the interpreter did not know but clearly this secret was shared by the entire tribe because not a single person in the village had a trace of gray hair next i met an old man i say old but again it was a virtually impossible to guess his age by simply looking at him during our conversation he recalled certain events and occasions and from that we conclude that he was about 104 years old i got into a lively conversation with this gentleman i asked him who is ruling our country for him country clearly meant kalahandi he look at me and smile at my ignorance don't you know he said it is a company sarkar that is ruling our country he meant of course the east india company the old man was not aware that india had become independent i show him some indian currency and the emblem of the ashoka chakra he was not impressed he said this is just a piece of paper how can you look at it and tell who is ruling us it is a gori wali rani who is ruling us nothing i said could convince him that the gori wali rani or the fair queen of england no longer rule india i knew that the barter system was very important to tribal people so i asked him about that do you know this small piece of paper can buy firewood lots of saris bags of salt matchsticks and even a piece of land he looked at me sympathetically and said for this paper people fight go away from our ancestral land leave our forest and go to cities have we not led a complete life without that piece of paper our ancestors did we are children of god settle here happily without this paper this is god's land nobody owns this land no river is created by us no mountain is made by us the wind does not listen to us the rain does not ask for our permission these are gifts of god how we can sell or buy land i do not understand when nothing is yours then how can you make such a transaction this little paper of your can turn our lives upside down i could find no words to answer him until that moment i had been convinced that i knew more than he did we know about currency movements political parties about the difference between bill gates and bill clinton here was a man who knew nothing of this yet 
he was aware of deeper more eternal truths he knew that nobody owned the land the mountains or wind who is more civilized this wise old man in kalahandi forest or those of us with our fingers on the pulse of the internet please think about it and tell me in the comment thanks for watching